What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Yes, we are back. I know it's been a long time, but Thanksgiving, family, you know how it is. Right, Brian? That's right. Plus, Hawkeye episode one and two dropped right yes. before the holiday, so we needed time to process that. Although, yes. it seems like, we'll talk about it, but seems like fewer people got on board this train to start. Well, let me give you an indicator. I did not know when it dropped. Really? I, I, I was working, and I, I think I saw something on Instagram that day. And I was like, oh, snap, this is out. <laughs> so I put it on that day. Uh, I think it was the following day. But I, I, I had no idea. It was just, it's just it, it, I mean, it's telling. It's telling. It's telling. Um, when you hear some of the stuff that's coming out regarding Hawkeye. But, yeah, we got a lot to discuss. Hawkeye, the Tom Holland trilogy, which I'm, is that's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. Um, also, um, Cavill sort of regurgitating in his own words what we wanted mm-hmm. for Superman, right? Then we gotta talk about The Rock, but not in that sense anymore. I'm not going crazy and I'm going in on The Rock and what this is has nothing to do with The Rock himself. But you know he has this movie Super Pets coming out, which we believe is gonna be The Rock's number one all time number one movie that he's been in. Um, the Book of Fat episode count has been revealed. Uh, and Kathleen Kennedy renews her contract till 2024. I'm very interested in hearing your comments, Brian, on that. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank all of you uh, for tuning in all the time. And thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Um, a couple of off the top, off the top um, topics. Um, Brian, I don't know if you've watched Hit Monkey. No, it keeps coming up in my Hulu feed, but I haven't pulled the trigger yet. You said it was good. I saw the whole season in one day. <laughs> really? Okay. I mean, it's 10, 10 episodes, 24 minutes each around there. It was very entertaining. It very, it, towards the end, we even got even better. Um, I, I highly recommend everyone watch it if they haven't seen it yet. And, I, and I, like I've said before, this is Marvel's attempt at the rated R content that um, we've been hoping they can get to when it comes to characters like the Punisher and Daredevil and others. Um, and I think this is their test into that that world. Um, did you buy your tickets, Brian? I bought my tickets already. I but didn't, I, although I, I heard that a lot of people that tried couldn't because the, system, the, um, the systems around the ticket websites went down for this movie. So no the, way home. So for the past three films, let's say Black Widow, any pretty much any IMAX film that I've wanted to go see, I've been able to get the same seats each time. Okay. This time I couldn't do it. I got like two next to it. <laughs> but everybody, it, this movie is going to make pretty good numbers by judging by those things that we've just mentioned. Yeah, it was interesting. You know, obviously, you would know, we, we had these headlines about Omicron and, and, and Thanksgiving box office as a whole wasn't that great. I think Encanto did okay, but not amazing. But I, I tell yeah. you one thing that was interesting. It's it's sort of not really related, but sort of related. So as I've told you, like out, out here, there's so many theaters so close together. It, it, I, I literally am like one of five people in basically any movie that I've gone to. They did a sneak preview for, I don't know if you've seen it, it's like his movie, Sing, Sing 2, this animated. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So they did a sneak preview on Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. Every theater by me was sold out for this. Wow. And I was like, interesting. Like, you know, are we seeing a little bit of a sea change and kind of, you know, people really starting to kind of ramp up their appetite, you know, did whether it was no time to die or whatever, so. like people, even with there's a little bit more, you know, COVID headlines out there, I people so. are like, all right, I'm ready for an event. I'm ready for something big. And, you know, yeah. thing two is not going to be, you know, <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man. But yeah, it just yeah. said to me, the audiences were craving going to the theater to the point where they're willing to sell it out. 
Everybody wants to get back to normal, Brian. That's what it just that's what this tells me. Everybody just wants to get back to normal, go to the movies, go to restaurants, and just go on to normal things that they're used to doing. Uh, hopefully we can get there, but uh, you know, everybody gotta play their part, I guess. Um first up, Hawkeye. Brian, I saw the first two episodes. I definitely felt like I was back at Marvel. Um, although with a character, although, you know, we've been looking forward to seeing this show based on what we've heard and what it was based on and, and the, the adaptation of that, um, Matt Fractor, uh, comic. Um, I kind of agree with the sentiment about certain things regarding Hawkeye, num one of them being you know the the what's it called the track the track tracksuit mafia the tracksuit mafia come on man you gonna tracksuit mafia has a is a dope name <laughs> to make these guys you know like clowns you know goofy yeah, that, it, it just doesn't work yo I know I understand Marvel you want to have fun and you but you gotta get a little bit more serious with some of these characters. And not all of these guys can be idiots and buffoons tripping over each other. If I want that, I'll go watch Three Stooges or Abbott and Costello and stuff like that. Not this. What were your thoughts on the first two episodes? So I liked it. I'm intrigued. There are characters being introduced. These are some of the things that I enjoy about um, anything Marvel puts out. But... Um, yeah, what were your thoughts? So I liked it. I I, I, um, I went in looking for a few things, and I felt like most of them were rewarded. So first off, I, I like your reaction to this. A little bit of a bait and switch by Marvel in this show. Obviously, Hawkeye is the titular character of the series, but this was very much a Kate, Kate Bishop, Bishop series yes. that Hawkeye yes. walked into. The yes, way yes. it was introduced, which I, what did you think about that choice? Because I thought Haley Steinfeld actually did a really nice job. Maybe she was a little too wisecracky. You could you could argue that piece of the we're back in Marvel hands, but I yeah. thought she actually was really good. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought she was good too. But I, now that you mentioned that part, I I do or did feel that this was Kate Bishop heavy, and it reminds me of the whole Shang Chi movie. You know, where Shang-Chi wasn't truly the star of this film. And so far, Hawkeye feels the same way. So that was the first thing was like when they did the first intro and you're seeing Kate's childhood. I will say, um, shouts to the staging of the New York attack from their oh, yeah. perspective. I oh, thought yeah. that was cool. We've yes, never yes, seen yes, yes, that yes. shot that way. I really liked that. Yes, that was yes. neat. Um, I think like I could tell Renner's having more fun. I actually feel like this is the kind of role that he does better with, where he's kind of a kind of an a hole. But yeah, honestly, yeah, like he's yeah, yeah. he's still a hero and he's still a good dude, and you can see that. But he's kind of a jerk, like yeah. as well. And I think he he never really got to do that. The Hawkeye was such a straight man. It was such a straight man in the in yeah. the Marvel movie, in the Avengers movies that like we really didn't see a lot of range from him. Yeah. I actually thought he, you could tell he was having fun, but like I said, he's sort of a TBD because he just didn't have a lot to do, quite honestly, in episodes yeah. one and two. And it's like, you know, to make it through a third of this season and he hasn't really picked up a bow yet, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of a flex by Marvel to be like, we can do this. So he better be <laughs> yeah. shooting some arrows in the last, yes, of last course. couple episodes. You of know? course. I like his character because if you've done the things that he's done and gone through the things that he's gone through you'd expect someone to be somewhat there or not there right that he's there with his kids but sometimes he drifts and because you know I love the hearing it, yes 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 most people do most people do um, he's a regular guy and, and all the things that he's gone through, especially the explosion that happened at the end of end game, it must have affected him somehow, right? Especially if you're a regular dude. Um, and you're seeing the, the, the end result of that and emotionally, the physical things, uh, I like how they've translated it into this 
based on what ha- ha- has happened in the past. Yeah, and you see that you see the fraction influence in the first two episodes where like they they show him get food with his kids. He calls his wife. It's like I'll, you know, it's like I'm yeah. trying to get a flight home for Christmas. That that is the essence of the comic, right? It's like what does this dude do when he's yeah, avenging? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you see that on display here. I thought the thought the like what were they called the, the 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 role play fantasy people like that was a little much for me uh, yeah but i got a it was a little long but i got a laugh out of like the idea of an actual like martial arts fighting expert mm-hmm. going up against a crowd of these clowns like <laughs> what it would actually be like and then he has to kind of you know yield but and again i thought that was a little bit much i would have traded that in for a little more serious action um but I, I but you that, have but you have to say you have to think about this i think it, it for a moment it offers him that escape of his real reality and stuff okay. right so so i think that was done although probably a bit too long um and i think grills he's a he's a he's a character in the comics he's a dude. Also. yeah yeah, yeah. I th- the whole thing was set up for that dynamic yeah I, I yeah guess. it does also underscore yeah like there is this you know the hawkeye everyman which is you know, Steve Rogers can't walk down a street, right? Yeah. It's a celebrity, right? He's he's Michael Jordan. Everyone mobs him. Yeah, yeah. Like Jeremy Renner can walk down a street. Like he's been a part he's, of the biggest team in the he's world. He's John like, Stockton. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> in the Dream Team, right? Walking through the rocket to Barcelona. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think they wanted to kind of drive home that that point, which I was I was okay with. I did. There were a couple of the visuals where I could see the comic influence too. That fencing scene in particular, the way it was shot. And like the, the the close-ups of the sword, I was like, oh, this is where I'm getting the the vibe of the like, hey, we're trying to shoot this to look like the pages of the comic, like scene by scene, yeah. page by page, what you would see if this was occurring. So, uh, you know, some nice touches there. We'll see where it goes. Um, and I like the fact that at least for now, the stakes are small enough that it's believable yeah. that these two can kind of deal with it now. Yeah. We can talk about Vera Farmiga's character and the security company that she works for. There's clearly some yeah. larger universe implications going on in the background, but like, yeah. I was okay with this show basically being like, yeah, like I agree with you, Tracksuit Mafia. A little too much comic relief. I mean, the over under number of times you're gonna say bro in this series is <laughs> probably like a million, but I think part of it is designed to be like, look, they have to be guys that like these two can deal with. That like yeah. they don't you're not sitting there being like why did you pick up a phone and call doc strange he's clearly in the new york sanctum at some yeah, point yeah, right yeah, so you yeah, have yeah. to kind of avoid that yeah um so I, so I was generally okay with it i was entertained i was kind of happy with the setup um and then obviously we haven't really gotten to the real villains yet just the tease at the end of echo so yes. i don't really i mean there's really nothing we can say yet about a local cop but obviously we, we see her um, and then I got to give shouts to Lucky because Lucky is obviously a major mm-hmm. character in the show, and they found a really cute golden retriever with the. I guess he has only one one working eye or one eye, but I don't know. Yeah, if that's, yeah. I don't know if that's makeup or the dog actually itself. I think it's CGI apparently. Eye. But uh, oh, is it okay? Yeah. But you know, incredible, incredibly uh, cute and, and fun to see. So I like that. What did you think of the villain set? Like the little setups and teases we got on these sort of the uh, what was it? Uh, Jack Duquesne and. Uh, you know, character. Well, for both of them, it sets up if they really committed a crime, right? Um, mm-hmm. If the mother killed the husband, if Duquesne killed his uncle, I believe his that was his yeah, uncle. His uncle. Yeah. So, um, and these are and, and Duquesne is obviously a, a, a character in the comics, supposedly um, Hawkeye's mentor. Um, I don't know. I, I'm interested in seeing what happens there. Um, I'm I'm fairly um, curious to see where this goes in terms of what part did they play in the demise of certain characters and and where does it lead to. Um, before we move, we move on, I want to just sort of uh, talk about this last piece people mostly have been um, speculating on, and that is the kingpin. Now, I don't want to turn. I don't want to turn his character into freaking. What's this guy's name? He's not going to be comic relief. If he, if no, he, no, 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 not comic relief, but to turn into um, Mephisto. <laughs> 
in that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. I got <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want. I don't want us to talk. I don't want us to talk about constantly. Oh, I, I, pretty much everybody has started the conversation, right? I don't know where it will end, but I don't want to turn it into the last episode. He might pop. You know what I'm saying? It could be. <laughs> it could be, but. Let's see where it leads. Obviously, Echo is tied to Kingpin because she works for Kingpin in the comic books. Um, but I'll wait till further along in the series to determine whether or not we may possibly get a sighting. And, I, you know, that's where I'll leave it. It's set up pretty well for him to make his appearance at the end again. Mm -hmm. If he is just because, like, if you figure the tracksuit mafia, they're the, they're the street level thugs. Yeah. Echo is like a boss, right? And then like yeah. Kingpin sits on top of, of the organization. It all kind of it all kind of makes sense. Uh, do you think Jack Duquesne is actually bad? He, it, it was it was so blatantly set up that he was that it made me think like that's a that's a complete deek, and he's actually not really that. And actually, it made me think Vera Farmiga is the real villain yeah, yeah. of the couple. Yeah. Um. Based on what I've read, he's not necessarily a bad guy, but he's, you know, he's a character. He has a certain, a certain arrogance about him, and, you know, he has things that he wants to achieve, and the way he comes off is, is you know, is very arrogant, and you think he may be up to no good, but I like his character so far. Yeah, I do too. I just, I mean, the comics, he was he was a mentor. Hawkeye fails to beat him as a youngster. Eventually, it takes a long time. He eventually does get the best of him. That's going to be a very interesting um, encounter. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens there. Let's let's keep an eye on that. Uh, let us know in the comment section what you guys think about Hawkeye, the first two episodes so f thus far. I would recommend checking it out. I yes. do think the timing probably did not help this show. I mean, they, it probably was a little bit of an experiment, but they went the day before Thanksgiving. And yeah. You kind of think it through, and you're sort of like, unless you got a whole household and extended family of Marvel fans, I don't think you're necessarily yeah. sitting down to watch this exactly. on Thanksgiving. The that way, definitely you're gonna watch football, or you're going to watch Macy's Parade. Like, yeah. So the viewership for this is... 40% lower than the Loki premiere, but I wonder how much of that's the holiday versus the actual show, which I think is actually pretty good. So. Yeah, I think if they would have, I think they would have done themselves justice by releasing three episodes this week and then just to catch up, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of this uh, first two episodes of Hawkeye. Next up, Amy Pascal says that they are going they are going to be doing a a trilogy another trilogy with Tom Holland now i don't know if Tom Holland knows about this but cuz cuz if you listen to what he's been saying for the past few weeks he seems like he's over it because he's not part of the real team <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if we could, yes. You can go back and read up articles of Tom Holland crying, talking about don't let this happen. Let's stay together. <laughs> you know? And so he's, he says some pretty interesting things about regarding the, the Spider-Man role and whether he wants to be involved with it. Um, but it seems like they're putting him in a position where I think this is this starts the negotiation of how much Tom Holland is going to need to be paid to do this film. Brian, your thoughts? Yeah, this is not. I mean, you call it a negotiation. This is going to be like a, this is you know this is this is gonna like a, this is like a hostage situation. It's like it's like what do you want? Okay, we'll double it. We'll triple it. Like what, they're gonna the number is going to keep going higher until he yeah. can't say no. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think this whole next couple of weeks is going to be very amusing for people like us because, you know, all year Marvel has had the floor because they've been promoting films and TV shows. And so you get a lot of Kevin Feige, right? You get a lot of Nate Moore uh, and people around Marvel. And like, so Sony gets kind of, you know, Venom gets going. And, but this is their main course. This is their Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. And 
So now Amy Pascal is basically going to be Kevin Feige for the next three weeks, and she's going to try to sell you yeah. on this newly renamed universe. So you are going to be seeing quotes from her like she's a million people at once. Yeah. I'm telling you, she is going to be everywhere trying to hype up what they're trying to do. And she knows that from a marketability standpoint, they can't lead off the newly renamed universe by changing Spider-Man. They can't. Yeah. Like, yeah. They can do it at some point, but they can't do it oh, yeah. in this first iteration, right? If you're going to show it a stinger with Venom licking the screen of Tom Holland, you can't then not have Tom Holland go up against Tom Hardy. That's, that's yeah. an ultimate fail if you do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is going to be like, here's what we're going to find out. We're going to find out in these like Sony verse movies, the budgets are going to be like $200 million. Yeah, yeah. You're going to find out Tom Holland clipped like 50 of that. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is all leading towards passing the baton on to Miles Morales. That, that's what they ultimately want to get to. But she's making it seem like there's going to be both of these happening at the same time. That they're going the they're going the WB route on this because she has a quote in one of these articles where she says, "You know, we're trying to be thoughtful about our Tom Holland trilogy, and then we're also trying to be thoughtful about the Miles Morales story we're telling." She's implying that they're going to exist, coexist at the same time before yeah. there's a true like one lead Spider-Man. Yeah, I still think that even though she said that, it's not going to come as easy as she would like. I agree. I, I think although she's the head honcho there, I'm sure Tom Holland, Tom Hardy are going to have a lot to say of how this goes. And... Unless they just care about the check, if they care about the check, we're gonna get what we get. But well, I think that's a big part. I think that's yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if they're doing it for the check and for this franchise to be successful, it's gonna have to lead towards Mars Morales at the end of the day, and 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 that's what they're shooting for. They're gonna be very careful of how soon they introduce him because they have to be. It has to be done well. It can't be some. It can't be, it can't be Kid Flash. Like that, that was horrible. That was horrible. It I was also curious as to this whole trilogy thing. So, this is supposed to be a trilogy of Spider-Man films, correct? This is these are not. So these would not count against. Presumably, at some point, he has to appear. Is he then? Would they be paying him extra to drop into like? Morbius 2 or Venom 3 or are these films going to pull in those characters because I feel like this could be a Robert you know, Downey like Jr. situation. I feel like situation. Tom Hardy or Jared Leto are going to feel some kind of way about being made to be second or third build in a Spider-Man movie when they have their own franchise. Yeah. I think they realize that I mean I wouldn't worry too much about Jared Leto, but for Tom Hardy, yes, because he is Venom's Spider Man and Venom go hand in hand, right? And, and he's making them money. He's making yeah. them a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I uh, yeah, I'm not worried too much about Morbius. But again, this is this is they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take their time and they're gonna hopefully again they can't mess up, right? No, it just it just made me wonder. Does that mean that the third film of this new trilogy is the Sony Sinister Six movie, or is th are these three films like in addition to what they're planning for that? Three just seem like a weird number for what they seem to be trying to do. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't be surprised that that after this. We'll probably get, we won't get Sinister Six like they were meant to be. I think after this, this could be resolved after this 
in my, I, I think that's what's going to happen. And then they're going to move on to another poly storyline. I mean, you're hearing um, Sandra Bullock being mentioned as Madam Webb. Who knows what we're going to get, but I wouldn't be surprised if they ended with this and this start with something new. Well, I just don't see any way that all of these solo villain films are going to make enough box office to justify their existence, which means their only path is going to be to fold some of these characters into a Spider-Man film. Like there won't be, let's say it's Craven as an example. Let's say Craven yeah. 1 comes out and is disappointing at the box office. So there's not a Craven 2. Craven is just put into one of the spider that's what I feel like has to yeah. happen at some point yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, this possible trilogy for Tom Holland in the Sony verse Sony Spider-Man uh, universe let's see what happens there is a lot of interesting things this can go a lot of different directions but uh, knowing Sony I'm betting on the, the it being a negative experience <laughs> um, next up Cavill talks of a lighter Superman sequel we all know what's been going on there We, you, you, if you've watched the shows you, you know what we think about this situation he looked great as Spider-Man um, Spider he looked great as Superman um but there was a lot of missing elements to his character that for me, I didn't identify as Superman-like. And Henry Cavill is a professional and he gets hired to play a part and he plays it. Um, I think he's in a position now to be a little bit more vocal about what Superman needs to be. And if given the opportunity, he'll do that. Brian, your thoughts on this possible sequel? Possible? I don't. Doesn't sound like this is for me. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could happen. What are your thoughts? It sounded more like a guy who was talking about what might have been than what yeah. will be. Yeah. To be honest, and I think it's unfortunate. I because uh, I think we we agree with him. I am, you know, all in. I'm a defender of Man of Steel, and I think even Man of Steel left the door open. And I yeah. think he's telling you, in his eyes, he felt like the end of Man of Steel left the door open for what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, I think that regardless of how you feel about all the decisions that were made, they eventually got this ship to a point where he, he's hired by the Daily Planet. They kind of show him, you know, in and among the crowd at the newspaper and he's established as Superman and he's regarded as a hero despite having killed Zod obviously so I felt like there definitely was a path there to a more enlightened kind of less moody kind of positively empowered Clark Kent yeah but whether it was a studio, whether it was Zach's vision all along, we'll never know. But the, I call it a shoehorning because that's what it felt like to me. The shoehorning of Batman mm -hmm. into BBS. Yeah. Took us almost by necessity into an incredibly dark place. And that's, yeah. I think, what he's referring to. He's like, they made a decision. They went with this storyline. It took us to a really dark path. And that's the character I had to play became darker and darker and darker. Yeah. And we'll kind of never know what the other path that would have been Superman centric would have looked like, or at least I don't think we'll ever know. I don't think yeah. we'll ever, even, even if he, even if he was brought back to play the part, which I don't think is going to happen, just given that we're changing the director, changing the right, it's going to be a different vision entirely. It's almost mm -hmm. like it'll be like a first film, not a, not a sequel. Too bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we haven't really spoken about it, but I would be interested in hearing your thoughts real quick on this. You know, he's also been talking about wanting to come over to the MCU and do Captain Britain. Do you think that's more of a possibility? Yeah, I had speculated originally that I didn't know that he... I thought Captain Britain was almost like a fan 
fans were just slapping that on him because he was British and he had played Superman. Mm-hmm. And apparently he actually does want to play a modernized version of Captain Britain. I mean, it's it, like you said about Tom Holland. Like he wants to be on the A team. They all, yeah. everyone wants to, everyone wants to be part of the A team. I mean, could he do Captain? Of course he could. He can do Captain Britain. I actually think, there, like I said, I honestly think like it sells him short a little bit. I think his talents are, you know, a little more broad. I find Captain yeah. Britain. I don't know. He'd face some of the same challenges that I think Chris Evans faced and ultimately conquered in solving Steve Rogers as a modern character. Yeah. But, you know, if that's what he's got his heart set on and Marvel wants to introduce that, then, you know, I don't think he's got a huge following, right? That's a big get, you know, that's going to sell tickets. And yeah. if you put him in any sort of team up um, again, that's going to be a big deal. So um, I think he could certainly do it. But I mean, would you want to see him as Captain Britain? I mean, we talked about this before. Like, we don't want him as Wolverine, but, we, you know, yeah. I mentioned the idea of him being a bad guy because I think, like, he, I think he can swing that way too. But. If he can pull out a performance and be Doom, maybe. The disfigured Henry Cavill? Are you kidding me? Not the handsome yeah. guy that everybody, you know, would probably in his head when he looks in the mirror, he sees that. Who knows? Yeah. But that is a very interesting role. Um, Captain Britain seems a bit boring for him. But... If Marvel can do what they've done with Guardians of the Galaxy um, and some obscure characters that you didn't really think that they would be that popular, they could probably do the same with Henry Cavill. Again, it's Henry Cavill. He has a following. He's out, he's on the A team. Everybody's going to come see that performance. Why not? But the more daring and riskier play, I think, is Doom. And if they if they, if he would if he were to be able. To pull that off and be on in at that top shelf echelon villain like Thanos, then that's a very interesting proposition. I'm with you because I think that's the more career making play. And you see, like, you know, the Witcher is sort of an anti hero and he yeah. plays that very well. Um, but I think to his credit, I think one thing we've seen in his career is he is not. He is not the kind of star. Like he's almost a better, so far he's been a better star than he's been probably a performer because he doesn't have like an Oscar nomination or what have you. But he has shown a willingness to be a team player. I think you, if, if nothing else, you have to say what he did in BBS and the Justice League was he basically was like I'm, I'll step to the side. Like he was not really. He went from being the the lead in Man of Steel to kind of being the supporting character in those movies really wasn't in Justice League a lot because he was yeah. dead. Yeah. Um, and then even like you look at like Mission Impossible Fallout, Man from Uncle, he shares. Like he's not a guy who requires that the universe revolve around him, which I think lends itself to, yeah, like if he wants to be doomed to the Fantastic Four, like he would do it. I don't think his ego is such that he would be like, all right, I can't, I can't be not top build opposite <laughs> to Richard. Like he, I think he would do it, and he, if he did it, I think he could steal a movie. Yeah, yeah. And Doom is a, is a character that definitely you feel his presence, and you're afraid of him. And it would be interesting to get Henry Cavill to do a character like that. That's that's, yo. Let's hope that happens, man. Hopefully, people hear this and like, yo, that's that's not a bad thing right there. Uh, let us know in the conversation what you guys think of Henry Cavill playing Doom instead of returning to Superman, probably just to play once or twice, and then that's it, recast, right? It doesn't make any sense. We he, Let's move on. I doubt he's going to um, – I agree with you, Brian. He's just talking about what could have been and not what will be. Uh, but let's see. Um, next up. You know, we've been talking about The Rock lately a lot, right? Um, but let's talk positively now. The Rock is in this movie called Super Pets, which Brian and I believe that this movie is going to make gangbusters at the theaters. This will be, who knows, who knows, The Rock's billion dollar film. I don't think it's out of the question. No, I don't think so either. And this comes out when? Next summer. I think it's like next June or July. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how that uh, plays out. 
because um, I know we're getting Black Adam before that. So it'll be interesting to compare those numbers. Brian, what are your thoughts on that possibility? And do you see Super Pets doing crazy, crazy numbers? And do you like what we've seen so far? Yeah, I do. The short answer is I do. Uh, there's a new teaser out. It's it's actually the full teaser, not the one that they dropped at Fandom, which was sort of like a tease of the teaser. Yeah. I think it's great. I mean, the, the you know, The Rock's voice talent, as we know from his wrestling days, is as good as anyone. And yeah. it's both comedic and it's dramatic. And we don't really see the comedic side as much anymore in, in films, but we really hear it in, in the teaser as crypto. And I like the animation. It's sort of like, a, a, I think, at least sort of takes the Secret Life of Pets style of animation and sort of, it's crisper, it's cleaner, yeah, got yeah. a little more effects to it. Yeah. You know, you got Kevin Hart, you got John Krasinski, like, you know, it's a big, big name cast. Superman is in it. So another, we'll chalk up another Superman for WB because yeah. Superman is in the teaser, so we know he's in the movie. But, and in fact, the whole Justice League is in the movie. It's shown in the God. teaser. The whole I, Justice League is shown in the I, teaser. I said this a long time ago. It would be cool to see them in the movie, and we're getting it. And we're getting it. And it looks like there's going to be some kind of set piece that involves them being incapacitated, and Crypto has to kind of rally a bunch of pets to go save the day. Now, my only critique, and I got to throw this out there, yeah. the comics version of this, each of the Justice League or the major characters had a pet. Mm -hmm. This does not appear to be Crypto rallying those pets. Okay. It's more he's leading a ragtag bunch of rescues who obtain superpowers and tries to lead the rescue. So that's where sort of Kevin Hart's character comes from. That's a little bit of a wrinkle that I was at least mildly disappointed in. Yeah. But the humor, the gags, the visuals, I just don't see how any kid is not going to want to see this. Not yet. making their parent take them two or three times yeah. to see this. Oh, because, yeah. you know, it is some of the same audience as the Black Adam and, and the Doc Strange, but it's much broader, right? There's an oh, yeah. age of kid that's not going to go to those movies. It is absolutely going to this movie and going to oh, love yeah. this movie because the animated competition is not going to be there. I, you know, I've, I've been saying seven fifty, seven hundred fifty million, 750 million easy. I watched the teaser. I'm with you. I'm like, I think I'd probably take the over on that. I think this yeah. could be a really big thing. And the start of, you know, as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we see like four or five of these. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think about, uh, Super Pets, um, it looks very interesting. I, I, I'm definitely going to see it. Hopefully my kid can stay in his seat long enough to see a movie because I'm still trying to get him to just sit, sit down and see a whole movie. Uh, hopefully next year he's he's cool with it because I don't want to go by myself to watch this movie. Anyway, next up, Keanu Reeves. He wants in, man. Again with who? The A team, right? <laughs> you don't hear him talking about wanting to be in the DCU. Even though he, even though he headlined the yeah, DC yeah. property, yeah, once upon yeah, a time. Constantine. Yeah. So, Brian, we've heard previously a number of times that it has been said that Marvel when doing or looking towards the future they always talk to Keanu to see what character he would be interested in or, or, or what character he could play this seems more like to me that they're on that path of deciding which character which character I don't know some people have thrown names out there. Again, we have to remind everybody, uh, at least how I do, I have to remind people, he's not a young buck. No, he looks a lot younger yeah. than he is. Yes, he's not a young buck. I'm pretty sure he's busy unless he's clearing the calendar for this role, whichever one he does. The ones that make sense to me, Brian, and I've said this in the past, and I say it each and every time I get the chance to 
the Beyonder for me is the perfect cast. He doesn't got to do a lot of action. He's all powerful, pretty much. Um, he's calling the shots. And he has a very interesting story. If you look into the Beyonder and what I guess ultimately led to his demise, it's very interesting. But, um, and the other ones have been Ghost Rider, Wolverine. Come on, guys. That's not happening. That's not happening. Stop Whoa. it with your, your casting for Wolverine. Zach McGowan is the only guy that can play this role. Zach McGowan, look him they're up. Not, if you they're not putting a 60-year-old actor in yeah, this role. Yeah, yeah. Not happening. So Ghost Rider seems to be, to me, a, a good fit. And the reason why I say that is because he's a big motorcycle head. Um, and I can see him playing that role. Some people have thrown the name out for, for Silver Surfer. I don't want to see Ke Ke Keanu Reeves covered in silver. No. I don't think he does either. Again, at his age, like, yeah. you know, John Wick, it's like, it's a great, great series, but it's like, can you look at Matrix Resurrections? Yeah, I don't kind of like <laughs> looking like himself. Yeah, days. it's like... He ain't, go he ain't doing six hours of prosthetics every Nah, day. nah. Beyonder is the right choice for him or Ghost Rider because he's a motorcycle head and Ghost Rider, obviously, he rides motorcycles. So... Brian, what are your thoughts on what possible characters he may play? And if this is nearing the possibility of it happening in the near future? Well, you know, I'll, I'll float. If you think of the type of role that someone of his, his age and stature makes sense for, I will throw out villain, I think is always interesting. Um, villain in... Shang Chi Two, something uh, like that. Okay. Wouldn't, I'm just saying, I he has a huge following globally. You got to think tactically too. Like he is very popular in Asia, dating back to sort of his work on the Matrix films. Um, I don't know the exact role. I'm just sort of thinking about like you know, we just saw in Shang Chi One, they took a you know an older actor and yeah. Tommy Leung put him opposite Simu Liu. They could do something like that again certainly something in some sort of mentor role where he's sort of the second or third build doesn't have to work the full shoot um, but can kind of lend real weight to a newer character they want to introduce so he's the biggest name but then they intro someone else and I don't quite know where that fits but like you know is there something just to throw something out there like is there something in the Namor universe where he brings the heavyweight A-list our Tenoch Huerta is sort of the up and comer in the lead. That's where I think Keanu Reeves would be used uh, mm -hmm. in this universe. And I think the way, you know, he, the answers he's been giving are the, his usual, like very Zen, very yeah. polite, where he's like, it'd be a great honor to have yeah. bestowed on me to play. It kind of, I'm with you. It kind of tells me that they're finally warm on something. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, is there something in the Blade universe he could do? Like, I, I don't, like, that would be meaningful. Uh, to that process so that's kind of what I'm on the, the lookout for is he's not the head I would be surprised if he even is Ghost Rider just because again I think if they do Ghost Rider they want somebody who can do three four five of these things and I don't know that you know he's yeah, yeah, he's yeah. approaching he's closer to the end of John Wick than he is the beginning and, and I know that franchise is incredibly intense I don't know that he wants to sign up for another one of those um, at this point in his his career so that's kind of what I have in my head um, the other possibility of course is Disney Plus he strikes me more as a big screen guy, but he was willing to cameo in, you know, Netflix always be my maybe. So I don't know, maybe he would do you know, a series or again, be like the one a yeah. in, in something we, we, uh, we haven't seen. So that's kind of what I have in my head. Not so much like heroic lead, but more mentor, yeah. lead, you know, good mentor or, you know, villain that we haven't really thought of, but he can pull off. Yeah, let us know in the comment section what you guys think of what character Keanu could play in the MCU. And please, don't. S I know if you say Wolverine, I know you mess with me because nobody out there that's serious about this thinks that he can do. Not that he can't do it, but he shouldn't. When, no, all right. The Wolverine, so, the Wolverine casting is a ten to is a ten. Look, Hugh Jackman just got done playing it for twenty years you think yeah. they're gonna sign somebody who can't do it for 20 years yeah zach mcgowan zach mcgowan i don't know brian if you've looked him up 
I have. I've looked at his appearance. I see what you. I see what you see. I'm not as familiar with yeah. his work as you are, but I see yeah. the physics, physical of what you see. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, a very interesting situation happening there. Next up, the Book of Fett episode count has been revealed and is going to be seven. Do we know the length of each episode? Is it going to be 45 to an hour? Or? Wait, the Mandalorian also is highly variable, too, right? There's yeah, episodes yeah, as short yeah. as true, 30 true, minutes true, true, that, right? True. As long as an hour. So, yeah, no The beauty of streaming. When you can, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You can put as much as you can for, you know, for 30, 36, 34. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Very interesting. Uh, I'm definitely looking. When is that coming out? December? I think it's right before Christmas. Right before. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Man. I, it, I just, man, you know what I liked about watching Hit Monkey? I can watch all of them right there. That's what I, uh, the Book of Fed is just, even though it's going to be fantastic, I would just love to, especially during these times, the holidays, where you got days off, you can just hang out, relax. I would love to, this is a bingeable sort of situation for me, you know? Yeah, I agree. I also think that, you know, we, we we're ready for some Star Wars. Like, yeah. let's be straight, man. Like, I feel like you know, the pandemic screwed everything up schedule wise. But like, when we started this year, like Wandavision was coming. We're like, all right, we're ready for some Marvel. We haven't had Marvel in a while. Had a lot of Marvel. Had yeah. a lot of Marvel, right? And so, what we haven't had all years, we haven't had any Star Wars. And like, after Rise of Skywalker did what it did, you know, it was almost like that next season of the Mandalorian kind of kind of cleansed your palate a little bit right kind of like washed away a little bit of the sour taste reminded you what you loved about star wars and so yeah, now yeah, we've waited yeah, a yeah. whole year it's like all right i'm ready for my christmas i'm ready to open up some star wars and yeah, go back. Yeah. yeah hey let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh the book of fett um and, and are you excited for it uh it's gonna be very 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 exciting to see the first couple of episodes. Hopefully, they release two as just instead of one. We'll see what happens. That's a good with call. I think this one. Yeah, that's a good call. I hope they do because I think if this one comes out swinging hot, like it'll really get a big audience. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, I don't know if it was a surprise to you. It was certainly a surprise to me, Brian. Shocked. I was shocked. Kathleen Kennedy renews her contract till 2024. What do you think brought about this decision, Brian? Is it the run she has had with the Mandalorian and the future shows that we have yet to see and her hand? Um that led to possibly those decisions being made. What do you think led to this decision of renewing her uh, contract to 2024? I was shocked. Uh, you know, the last report we had was that she herself wasn't really keen on coming back. She wanted to do Indi you know, Indiana Jones 5 with her, her husband, Frank Marshall, and then they could kind of call it a career together after that. I mean, based on recent merit alone this is kind of a questionable decision by disney to be honest like i mean the the controversy and the train wreck that the new trilogy became is on her watch i mean that's on her hands like i i don't know you can't you can't yeah. wash her of that response of that of that going off the rails the way it did and you know you certainly give her some degree of credit for the Mandalorian, but by all accounts, that's a Favreau, you know, Don Favreau, Dave Filoni brainchild that they really kind of shepherded it from start to finish. So I, I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like she was much more involved in the films than she was in the series. So yeah. to give her, you know, three more years, I don't, I don't, I don't know because like they, they don't have a. The only film they have is basically now on ice because of creative differences with Patty Jenkins. Everything else is a TV show, yeah. And she hasn't really been on the TV side as much with Star Wars. So, 
I don't really know what she's doing, to be quite honest. And like, I guess Indiana Jones 5 keeps getting delayed. That's not like 2023. So maybe the contract just allows her to still oversee that. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, the Star Wars fandom probably, I would imagine, is somewhat divided on her anyway. But like, kind of feels like they need someone else. Or at least in addition to her, who is quarterbacking... Um, some of the, at least the series, right? The, I guess who's the the Marvel guy? Brad Windebaum, right? He's now the head of the TV side, whereas Kevin is sort of the overseer. Yeah. I feel like they need one more person in a seat. Um, but I don't know. Like, do you feel better or worse about the next three years of Star Wars, knowing she's back for another term? Um, I feel. I still feel hopeful for the Star Wars franchise regardless of who they got in there because I think they're starting to recognize what's needed and what people want and recognize that the last trilogy was a you know atrocious attempt to revive Star Star Wars and they're making their changes I don't know if Kathleen Kennedy was a part of that and perhaps because she was a part of that and, and is excited to see uh, fans you know fall in lo- falling in love with that IP has rejuvenated her I guess interested in, in, in continuing in, in developing this, this world that being said she you know she, she's been talking about some of what's in the pipeline and I think one of the things that at least caught my eye and I didn't know how I feel about it was she referenced that a number of the new characters or sorry a number of the characters from the new trilogy would be back in various projects interesting which kind of made me feel like are you holding on to something to prove a point here like I thought I think fans would just as soon be done with most of these characters. I mean, other yeah. than maybe Kylo Ren, Adam Driver, um, you know, that may be the one if you wanted, but he's, I mean, he's dead, I guess, in the end of the series. So yeah. I read that and I kind of was like, have you really learned your lessons from the trilogy? Or are you still trying to put some of these characters down people's throats and make them like it more than they're ever going to? If they go that route, they're going to, they, again, they'll be they, sorry, they, I think. They, they, they have to start anew and just forget about that and move on. If she tries again, like you said, if she tries to prove, if she's trying to prove a point by doing this and continuing this storyline, I don't know if people are gonna show up for it. And if it is, and if it's bad, it's like you gotta look at the Disney higher ups. And blame Bob, Bob Chapek at that point. Right. Well, know? that was kind of what I was going. <laughs> I was like bringing her back. And like, also, the actors seemed so sour on their experience, right? John, oh, you, yeah. You, what, John Boyega wants oh, to be Oh, forget about again? it. John Boyega was, yo, if you go back to some of the stuff that he said, he went in. Yeah. So he was, yeah. He was like, I'm taking my lightsaber and I'm chopping every bridge that I can find. I, and that's what I mean. Like, you know, Oscar Isaac didn't seem very keen to, to, you know, basically be part of, you know, the Poe Dameron world again. Like, I, I just don't get it. Like, I don't know who who's clamoring for this. At the end of the day, I think they don't; those guys don't come back. And Kathleen Kennedy is going to do, I guess, whatever is necessary to move on, and they, or they're going to make her. Those are the only two options. She right. either moves on herself, or Disney says, "Yo, you got to move on." Well, and then the other thing, too, is like when we hear the thing coming out about creative differences with Patty Jenkins, you know, we talked about it and said, listen, I, and we both agree, like, you know, giving Patty Jenkins the keys to the kingdom and not overseeing her is a mistake. But let's be fair. Who is Patty Jenkins having creative differences with? I mean, can it, that's got to be one of the people. I mean, it has to be one of the people she's at odds with. Yeah. So all, I'm just saying already – your first film in the post-new trilogy world is off to a rocky start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, obviously, if Kathleen Kennedy is the one in charge, then any sort of 
decision to move forward with anything is going to go through her. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. A lot of drama. Um, and it's going to be uh, an interesting 2022 to see how far we get into this and where we are at that time. But um, before we wrap up, just wanted to make mention, I know, yes, Zack Snyder said something. He did a Twitter thing. And <laughs> listen, I'm not going to entertain that. Zack Snyder has millions of people backing him. I'm sure he loves it and he loves his fans and he's a showman and he's going to use that, I guess, connection that he has with all these fans to interact with them, which however way he can. But for those of you holding out hope of this happening, very slim chance of it happening. Brian, before we move on and wrap up, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't look. I mean, the the teased photo that he put out over Thanksgiving. I don't understand the contractual logistics, right? He's clearly with Netflix. Netflix doesn't really do deals to share. Netflix can't do the project that he seems to be teasing. So, I just don't see a world where he's working with Netflix, doing what he wants, and then like he's also got a side deal to do a DC project back at the new merger, new post merger Warner Brothers. It just it doesn't seem practical. Um I actually I, I want to see Rebel Moon. I actually think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. And he's got Sophia Butella in the lead role. She seems like she'd be great as we've already seen her do some pretty cool action in the Kingsman series. So I'm I'm all for that. I don't need him going back to, I mean, if this was to happen, it basically almost feels like a touchdown dance at Ava DuVernay's expense. Yeah. I, I don't know that we need that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Give me a like if you liked the first episode of Visions, Star Wars Visions. That first episode, Brian, was amazing. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't watched it. I've heard I've heard mixed things, but it seemed like the kind of thing that I would I would like. Watch I'll try to get to it this holiday that season. One episode. The okay. First, first epi- the first episode was amazing. I've watched it several times. It was that good. Watch mm-hmm. it. The rest, I don't know. I haven't really heard anything good about any of them. I think it has to do with a lot of the animation style. But the the way this for me was just beautiful. Um, I would watch ten episodes of that. It was just well well made. Kudos to uh, whoever, whichever director did that. I gotta get his name and find out and probably see more of his work. I don't know, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I recommend watching that first episode of uh, Visions or Star Wars Visions. Watch Hit Monkey. And Brian, before the year's out, please watch at least the first five episodes of Silver Surf. <laughs> I got a lot of horror. <laughs> at least watch the first three. Everything else after that is a little bit like, it's not that it's bad, it's deep. And again, I understand why kids didn't really at- uh, connect with it because the language there is just is like way beyond the language you know uh, regular people speak is it was very deep uh, but it's a tragic story watch that um and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report